Hello. Thank you for stopping in my studio in Shelbyville, Michigan today. Teresa Salgado has asked me to present a new tutorial today as part of the Studio, studio Cryptique Be Seen, Be Known design team. So when Teresa first brought out the Beads and Blends kit, I immediately thought windmills. So bear with me while I switch the camera around and we'll get started on making a windmill. So we're going to make a simple three-sided windmill using the Bees and Blends kit to create the original triangular shape. Well, let me put you on pause one more time while I show you some of the supplies. Alright, we're going to be using the Bees and Blends kit, specifically the triangular shapes and the blade. We'll be using two squares of Primo, one of the spring coils, Translucent liquid sculpey. We're going to be silk screening, so we're going to use a silk screen, a squeegee, acrylic paint. Once we've baked our clay, we will be gluing them together and then assembling them from there. We will also be using these brass rods to make the angled arm for the windmill. I'm going to put you on pause one more time. Brass tubes from the package. And going to cut it with the cutters three or four inches set aside the extra we're okay. looking to make an L shape take the pliers about an inch in and bend just slightly less than a 90 degree angle if you do it at a 90 degree angle, it tends to make the the, uh, the blades of the windmill droop a little too much. Set that aside. You only need one of them. I was just showing you this, the angle. Using your first cube of premium, break off about a third or, or one section and roll it through your pasta machine on your number two setting on an Atlas 180. For this project, I've decided to use the largest of the triangles that come with the bead and blends kit. Place them on the clay, smooth them down. Using the large blade that comes with the beads and blends kit, place it and push. And at that point, I usually pick it up and run along my edge my my template do the same with the other side cut off the end And the other end, I'm going to make sure this is cut. Pull off the extra clay. And then you can pull off the template. You'll wad up this clay and add a little bit more from your your original piece and do that two more times you should be able to get the whole three sides out of the one square clay and have some left over for the edges next using the silk screen we're going to apply the silk screen and smooth it down make sure it's well adhered Take your acrylic paint and give it a good shake. Open your tiny Pandora squeegee. Apply some paint at one end. Use the squeegee. Make sure you use the right side of the squeegee to pull down the length of the project, of the panel. Thank you. 
that bed in water. And pull the soak screen up. I'm going to immediately dunk this in my water. Because I'm not going to silk screen the more I have ones already set aside for to show you. Do the silk screening on each of those other two panels. Ideally, if you want the cleanest silk screen and the best looking silk screen, you'll dunk the silk screen in water, let it dry, then apply it onto the second panel. Do the same thing again. Put it on the third panel. That'll provide the the cleanest. Uh, best looking silk screen. Once you have each piece silk screen, you'll place them on your baking pan, tent, bake at 275 for approximately 15 minutes. Make sure you let the acrylic paint dry before you do that baking, of course. Now they're baked, you can turn, turn them over and apply super glue on one of the panels on the edge I like the uh, Loctite gel control because it doesn't drip onto my surface too much take your second panel line it up on the bottom and adhere it place it at an angle on those two tack spots and hold it till it dries, which is tedious, but it's got to be done. Once the super glue is set, the tacks have set, I usually come back through and add a little more super glue along the edges and let it dry again, which I've done in this piece. Then you roll out a snake of clay and you use your translucent liquid sculpey. Run a bead of liquid sculpey along the top surface. You don't need a lot, but because we are putting raw clay on baked clay, you do need to add a little bit to help that adhere properly. And I seem to have a clogged nozzle here. Yeah, it's working better. Your snake of clay and place on the edge and roll it down. This is the same technique that Teresa Salgado just used or just demonstrated in her new bangles video that she just released in the last week. Just within the last week of May or maybe just this early in June here. Um, you adhere that down, roll the clay down over the edge and on the, down the sides a little bit. Run the extra, some extra clay off the end because you're going to replace your brass rod in there to form your arm for, to hold the blade. If you're looking for a spot like that, you can adjust it a little if it's overlapping too much. And continue on and do that to the next side. Pauses because my snake clay is not long enough. Right, that's better. Place that on there again. Roll using your thumb and finger, roll it down over the side. On to the last side, translucent or er, liquid sculpey. I'm not using the translucent one. But... Apply your last snake clay, push it down, running off the end, 
and then use your pointer finger again to roll it over the joined edges. Should have like that. Revisit the sides to adjust them to make them look nicer. And then you've got all this extra clay at the top. That's when we're going to get the brass rod out. And I'm going to face it off to one of the sides. Place it in the opening at the top. And wrap the clay around it. I usually place it down between and wrap the clay up above it so that the, there's a back, definite backstop. And once you bake it, you're looking at it like that. While it is baking, you're going to work on the, the blade for the windmill to make the actual windmill portion. I'm going to set both of these aside and come back to them in a moment. To create the windmill blades, I'm in my PDF I provide three designs. You're welcome to do whatever makes you happy, but these are the three designs I've used in my samples. So I'm going to actually show you this one. You should be into your second um, second wedge of clay or square of clay now. So this is the spring coil. It's got this loop at the end. The loop in the end is in the way. So we come in and chop off the loop. is a little bit for the extra metal underneath it. And that is not open, so I need to do it again. So I have this open coil. So using my template, I can come in and do a preliminary shaping of the blades. And keep working that around. This one's not going to be exactly as my template, but you get the idea. So let me put you on pause so you don't have to watch me mess with the uh, manipulate the clay. We'll get back to the next step. If the audio has faded every once in a while, I keep forgetting to put my uh, my mic back on my shirt. So. I apologize for that, but hopefully it doesn't get too annoying. You can hear, hear still here. So I've got each of the blades, fins, constructed. They're not perfect, but they'll do for right now. And I'm going to come back in, take my coil, and stick it between one of them. Then work the clay still following my pattern to keep that in the middle keep it straight up and down keep working it out switch this out with a finished one here a minute so you can see what we're looking to accomplish all right i smoothed quite a bit and kept it I had actually measured these to make sure they were equal sized pieces, so I didn't do that for during the demonstration right now, but that is recommended. Measure your clay pieces so you have equal amounts so you won't have as much fight along here like I was having with the other piece. Make sure the, the coil is straight up and down and set aside to be baked with the, the cap part. Let me put you on hold again. Next, we're going to form this cap piece that holds the blade on to the arm of the of the actual windmill. So 
So you have a T-pin. There, I bought them at Michael's. Box of like 300. Um, I'll probably have T-pins for the rest of my life at this rate. But you take the T-pin and you're going to put some clay around the T-pin. So I just did a quick hand roll commissioning this. I'm going to stick the T-pin in, if I can pick it up. Stick that in and embed the T. And then make it as fancy or as plain as you would like. Let me get my, some of my other samples so you can see what I've done to them. This is my original one, my original construction. I just made it a cone shape. And my next sample, I made it cone shape, but I painted it, and I also put some grooves in it. This piece, I'm going to get rid of some extra clay. And go back to that cone shape, maybe a little pointier. You can make an animal head on there if you were so inclined. And then I could put decorations or texture in there. And this is what I actually came up with, with for the sample that I have here. I put dots in it and I painted it after it was baked. So place that and your blade. Once it's constructed better than that on your baking pan cover tent and bake at 275 for a half hour to 45 minutes because this is for this blade is pretty thick once they're baked i again i applied acrylic paint to this one i also cut the put it in there to see how far down it sat in it so some of the the pin had to be shortened i took my cutters and shortened that up One thing I forgot to mention, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Once you still have this raw on your T-pin, and you're just about ready to bake it, put it on there and determine, again, if you need to cut off some of the pin, which I do in this case. So sorting the pin. And then put it in the tube and make sure you do an indent into the clay around that where it hits the tube because that way when you go to put your blade on later you can actually glue it on there it has an indent to seat the, the tube all right so these are my bake pieces i'm going to just place that on there and Put the the end cap on. At this point, I'm ready to actually glue that on there. So take that off. Apply a little bit of glue right around that indent again. Place it on there. And then let it dry. It's disconcerting trying to look down on this. So close to my glue here. Set this one aside, let it dry a little longer, and show you this again. This is my first one, it, it spins pretty good. And this one's a little more like the windmills you may see in the middle, middle of the country. And that one spins pretty good too. And this one spins okay. You can change up the decorations. Let me get you some other samples. For both of these, I used the smaller 
one of the smaller triangles, the second one down. This one I got a little fancier with the top part, and I actually inserted mica windows in there and before I baked it, and then I applied paint, I uh, carved it while it was still raw, and then applied paint after it was baked on the high, high surfaces. This was built on a purple base, and silk screen was silver. And then I used a, a Lisa Belvalka um, border mold for the sides. And just made the camera bounce all over the place. One more hold here. All right, that was pretty much my presentation because this is a Tiny Pandora kit, the Bees and Blends kit. Of course, you get a free, free gift every time from Tiny Pandora. So enjoy that. And please do, of course, feel free to email me. My information's on the PDF if you have any questions or if you want to show me what alts you've made. Thank you. Have a good day and keep making magic by shaping clay.